How do you make your embroidery look more naturalistic and more interesting? You embrace the experiment and play with your needle and thread. In this video, I'll show you how to embroider the detached chain stitch and how I use it to embroider interesting flowers. I'll show you how to start your thread without a knot, the chain stitch versus the detached chain stitch, and how to experiment to create interesting and more naturalistic flowers. I'm using DMC six strand embroidery floss. I use two strands of embroidery floss folded in half, which will give me four strands to embroider with. Then I thread the ends through the eye of the needle, and this creates a loop at the bottom of the thread. Hold the loop, Come up through that loop and you have your first chain stitch. That first stitch will be slightly thinner than the rest, but with more stitches it'll blend in. Then you're going to take your needle back down where you just came up and go forward one stitch length. This creates another loop, hold it open and come up through the loop. When you reach your final stitch, make a tiny stitch over your loop and finish your thread. For the detached chain stitch, you make a single loop and secure it with a tiny stitch over that loop. Then you move on to the next chain stitch and keep going. And this stitch is lovely when you combine multiple stitches. So one example is the Lazy Daisy stitch. When you make a circle of detached chain stitches, you have a little daisy. You can draw some guidelines so you don't have to think about spacing while embroidering, but I like to fill it as a compass. So north to south, then east and west. And then you can do a final round to fill in the gaps. To make it a little bit more interesting and naturalistic looking, I'm asking myself questions like what would happen if I add longer petals in between and what if I use less thread, so two instead of four. I think the different lengths add interest and there's a slight gap from the first stitch that I did which was a little bit thinner and I think that looks good too. In nature you will often see petals missing so it adds a more naturalistic vibe. Now all I'm doing when I'm experimenting with these stitches is asking myself questions like what would happen if I made the stitch to secure the loop longer or what if I spaced the legs of the chain wider apart or what if I made them lopsided or twisted. So at this time it's not about making a pretty flower, it's all about playing with needle and thread and experimenting.
With all these stitches you can make so many variations. You can arrange them in a circle for an embroidered flower or group them together as leaves. You can vary stitches in length, the amount of threads, the size of the shape you're filling. You can layer stitches, the possibilities really are endless. For this one, again, I'm starting with the loop method, but I'm making a very small stitch so that you don't really see the loop. It does leave sort of a knot, but once I fill out the entire flower, you won't really notice it. For this one, I did draw a little circle as a guide, but I didn't worry about it being a perfect circle. In this first pass you can see the stitches are roughly the same size but not perfectly even. For the second pass to fill in the gaps, I'm making the stitches shorter, creating an interesting floral shape. Now it does remind me more of a spent flower head than a flower in full bloom. Now and with the different flowers that I made, some I like, some I love, and others were an interesting experiment. And you might wonder, how do I use these experiments and turn them into a finished piece? Well, check out this video here, where I will use these hand embroidered flowers to create pretty linen napkins. And I will upload it next week.